When trying out DaVinci Resolve, people always walk around with the same questions. So I decided to make a video and address the most common ones. Let's get started. First up is the age old question what the difference between the free version and the studio version is. Mainly, the biggest difference for the average user is how the decoding and processing of files is handled. The free version of DaVinci Resolve relies heavily on the CPU, while the studio version relies more on the GPU. The studio version has GPU accelerated encoding and decoding of the widely used H.264 and H.265 formats that can greatly speed up editing and rendering performance. The studio version offers more options and effects as well like higher frame rates and quality. Some effects can be achieved in free as well by using certain workarounds like the lens distortion effect which I made a video on a long time ago. Noise reduction however can only be achieved on the studio version. Now my advice is to dip your toes in the free version and then decide whether or not it's justified to pay $299 for the studio version. In my case it was because this gives me free lifetime updates and allows me to stay clear from the Adobe Suite subscription model. Some of you might want to work on projects together or maybe even switch between computers like I do. For instance, the computer that I film my tutorials on is a different one than what I edit with. Not because one of them isn't sufficient enough, but because this allows me to spend more time with my family rather than just sitting in my office. DaVinci Resolve 18 had a major release featuring cloud-based workflows for a new way to collaborate remotely. You can host project libraries using the Blackmagic Cloud and collaborate on the same timeline in real time with multiple users globally. This is absolutely huge because prior to this it wasn't possible. The workaround for working on projects on multiple computers has been discussed in one of my videos which I'll link in the description. But even that wouldn't allow you to work in real time. So Resolve is definitely improving over time. One of the biggest challenges when switching between editing programs is not so much the layout of where you can find everything but more in the shortcuts you use. Because if you're like me then after a while you've created your own set of shortcuts that allow you to swiftly go over your footage and make cuts and delete parts where needed. Luckily DaVinci Resolve asks you what keyboard layout you want to use when you first start. This will help you customize your workflow even more. Now one of the downsides of using DaVinci Resolve for me is the lack of being able to save your keyframes. You can work around that but for that you need to place the keyframes in an adjustment layer and then save that adjustment layer in the master bin. But usually you need custom values for your clips anyway so you end up doing everything manual again. I wish they would really look at Premiere Pro because it's so much easier to edit videos that way. What they do allow you to do though is to save your clips or bits of it in the master bin. And the same goes for images. For instance, my watermark in a video is saved into the power bin and so is my intro. That allows me to quickly drag and drop them on my timeline in every video that I make. So be sure to learn how to use the master bin properly to speed up your workflow. Next up are the built-in sound effects. Maybe you've heard from music licensing websites like Epidemic Sound and Artlist. I even have a link for Artlist in the description down below which will give you two months for free. But did you know that DaVinci actually has a sound library of its own? Not only that, but it's free as well. However, before you can use this sound library, you will have to download it from their website. In the description is my tutorial on how to do so. The video is only two and a half minutes long and will save you a lot of money. Keep in mind though, the higher your demand for sound effects and music, the bigger the chance you'll have to go for one of the subscription models. The final one is that DaVinci Resolve comes with built-in transitions and effects. This ranges from anything like a crossfade to more sophisticated effects like lower thirds. Very helpful for interviews for example. Other effects are the CCTV effect which makes it look like you're watching a security camera somewhere to an effect like the video call effect which gives your footage a Skype like touch to it. These built in effects are very useful to cut down on your learning curve so you can just create great videos straight away. And that's it! Let me know what you found the most useful one. Now if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve please click that playlist right there. For now my name is Rico Richardson, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Do it.